Hello, my name is Michelle Sudbury and I'm the STEM coordinator at the Texas Education Agency. I'm excited to release the instructional series on the STEM toolkit. The STEM toolkit was designed to help districts or campuses design and implement a district-wide or campus-wide STEM program. This video series will consist of five videos that will go through the tools step-by-step. -step. This is the first video in the STEM toolkit series. If you've not watched the introductory video, you'll want to stop in order to understand the STEM framework and go back and watch that. The objective for this video series are to empower leaders with information to help guide their, and support STEM decisions. After this video series, participants will be able to define the indicators of high quality STEM education as they relate to the TEA STEM framework, communicate the purpose of the STEM resources within the STEM toolkit, recognize the logistical considerations that are important for planning and implementing successful STEM programs, and explore ways to include community stakeholders in STEM programming. One of the first things uh, that we had to do in developing STEM programming in Texas was to establish a common definition for STEM education. We define STEM education as a method of hands-on teaching and learning where students learn to apply academic content by creatively solving real-world problems with innovative design-based thinking to prepare students for future career opportunities. When we talk about STEM throughout this series, we are talking about a method of instruction, not a course or a program. To help guide districts in the development of STEM programming, the TEA has developed a STEM toolkit. The toolkit is designed, divided into three sections and will be covered during the instructional series. Each video will be kept to a short overview to help users navigate the tools and resources more quickly and efficiently. This video will cover the STEM planning tools. Inside each section of the STEM toolkit, the format will be the same. There will be a short description for the page. The STEM resources are listed in a sequential order, but the tool sequence may vary based on the district's needs. When a resource is clicked, a dropdown will give a detailed description for the tool, including the intended audience and purpose. The link for the PDF is located under the description, and this same format is followed throughout the STEM toolkit. For your convenience, at the bottom of each page, there are navigation buttons to assist users in getting back to the homepage or to other areas of the STEM toolkit. Now we're gonna go live on the website and look at the planning tools within the STEM toolkit and do a high level overview for each tool. All right, so on the screen, you see the TEA website. I'm gonna show you how to get to the STEM toolkit from this main landing page. So you will go to uh, academics, then look for STEM, which is under the college career and military division. Once you click there, it's going to take you to our landing page. And this is where you'll find all the information um, that we cover in this series and also all STEM related information uh, for K-12 programming. So on this landing page, if you scroll down, you are going to see the STEM framework, which we covered in the introductory video. All tools within the series are based on this STEM framework. So it's important to understand um, the, the domains and the high quality indicators. If I go down to the very bottom, you're going to see some navigation buttons. Um, under the ecosystem button is where you're going to find the STEM toolkit. So I'm gonna click here and this takes you to the landing page we just covered. So I'm gonna go into the STEM planning tools. 
And then here you find the landing page for this part of the toolkit. Each of the tools here are listed, like I said, in sequential order. And just to give you um, some context here, if you're developing a program from scratch, from the ground up, what we were asked by districts when we did the listening tour is that there needs to be tools to support districts in almost a simple how-to guide, step one, step two, step three, et cetera. And so that's what we've done here. We actually have five steps listed on all of these planning tools, uh, but you're going to see um, that we have also included the STEM funding tool. And so we'll get to that in just a second, but you're gonna notice that is not one of the steps on these planning tools. So um, I'll go into more detail about that. When you click on this uh, little icon here, this is going to give you um, a brief description, which I won't read to you here. I'll let you do that on your own. But then you'll find the actual tool listed at the bottom. Uh, this is the needs assessment. So this is really the first step. If you have not done any type of assessment of STEM in your district or on your campus, this is really the first step. The STEM needs assessment can be done by a leadership team, but it also can be sent out to all of your staff um, to get their perspective as well and assess where you are as a district and where you wanna set your goals. So step one is always going to be a little look at the framework. Step two is your needs assessment. If you've already done some type of needs assessment or you know we, we haven't really done STEM, so we are starting from ground zero, um, then you can start here um, on step three. Uh, this is where you uh, complete the model identification guides. So I'll go over that um, in a moment. Step four is your program planning guide. And step five is thinking about how to sustain uh, your program. And this is really where that STEM funding tool comes into play. Um, and it's been uh, really well received by leadership as they try to figure out how to fund their program. It gives you lots of different ideas. So this is just briefly how the STEM uh, needs assessment works. You have multiple choice questions. Um, you'll go through and answer these. And then down at the bottom, you will have a scorecard. <clears throat> and this scorecard, um, you record your response. And then you look up um, at this key and it will tell you which stage of implementation you fall under. You'll record that for each one, and then you'll get your score. Where did most of your responses fall? If they mostly fell under the developing um, implementation, then you'll um, have that clue as you go into your model identification guide. So this just gives you a gauge of where you're at. I'm gonna go back here and now talk about the model identification guide. So hopefully you watched the introductory video and in the STEM framework, we've outlined what the models are. There are four different models within our K-12 STEM education plan. Um, all four models are valid. Um, it just depends on where you're starting within the school year. So whether you are uh, at the introductory level and your goal is to get to partial immersion, then, uh, that's a great place to be, that's where you are. So there's nothing right or wrong about any of the models. They are where you are. In this model, um, it is a calibration tool. It's hard to know where you're at if you have no guideline to figure it out. So this tool does that. It goes through each high quality indicator and it tells you what are um, components in that model, in this indicator. And then it even gives you some examples so you can see yourself in these examples. So we'll do this first one together. There are, of course, six domains, um, each one having different high quality indicators. This first one's about equity. So let's say that you offer STEM programming in STEM clubs after school. 
those STEM clubs are open to the entire um, student body, uh, but it is capped for um, teacher capacity. And um, so maybe there's an application process to, to apply um, or a payment required to be in the STEM club. So you can look at each of these models and see what an, the equity piece in each model looks like. So if you're offering a STEM club, um, and I'm looking at the examples, I don't see it here, but in the introductory model, I see that STEM experiences are available for a limited number of students, for example, in STEM clubs is listed. So for this 1.1, I would be aligned to the introductory model. Now, when I go down to another domain, maybe looking at professional development, uh, maybe we've not offered any professional development for STEM. So for this indicator, I might fall under the exploratory model. Again, there is a scorecard at the end. So I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom of this document. Here you have your scorecard. You would do just like in the needs assessment. So the format is going to be the same. You would mark where you fall and then determine where are most of your check marks. So if on this, I fall mostly under introductory, then the check marks that fall in exploratory, I know those are areas that I need to try to bump up to introductory and in those examples are going to give you ways that you can do that. And maybe for right now, that is your goal. You wanna be fully introductory by the end of the year. Maybe your goal is by the end of the year, you are starting to move some of those check marks to the partial immersion column. So you would set your goal accordingly. So again, no right or wrong. Uh, this is just a calibration tool to figure out where you're at. Going back, the program planning guide is the next step. So once you have done these other two pieces, it's time to really get into the meat of planning. So this tool you'll see is uh, number four on the step. And you're gonna go through each high quality indicator again and look at what you're currently doing. And this might be uh, not applicable because maybe you're not doing anything yet. Um, or it could be your current STEM programming is right now offering STEM clubs to students. Um, your goal for growth is maybe expanding those clubs um, and increasing the number of offerings uh, for the, the next semester. Uh, your timeline uh, would be included here. And then what inputs are gonna be required? And so this could be financial. So if we're offering more clubs, there's going to be more cost for consumables and, and, and different resources that are needed. You, you might have a human input. You're gonna need another teacher or um, more volunteers to be involved. So all of those components there would be listed. And then what's your expected outcome? What are you hoping to achieve by these STEM clubs? And maybe it is um, as simple as growing awareness for STEM and um, maybe towards a theater pattern in your, if you're in elementary, in your middle school, um, maybe there are elective courses that you want to grow awareness for to support your middle school campus. Um, so these expected outcomes would be what you are wanting to get out of it and then the artifacts to measure the program. How do you know that you've met your goal? Uh, are you going to uh, look at attendance in the program? Are you gonna look at sustainability of the program? Maybe persistence within the program? And how are you going to um, collect that information? So I always like to stress, these are not things you're reporting to TEA. This is a uh, document to help you in your planning. Um, and so these artifacts would be things that you are collecting internally. The next tool in here is the leadership roles and responsibilities. So this tool was requested by the field um, for districts that are just getting started. Um, maybe you've, you've never really thought about who should be doing each thing when it comes to STEM education. 
So we have developed a table to help you with um, what it needs to be done at the district level and what support you need. Um, maybe what support you need from a finance officer, building level administrator, an instructional coach. Um, it's great if you can have a STEM instructional coach or a coordinator, but that's not always possible. So what does a STEM instructional coach do and who might could help support um, that piece of the puzzle if you don't have an instructional coach? Um, an ecosystem liaison, and then student leaders. So this just gives you an idea of best practice in a STEM education program, the different roles, and who would be doing each piece. So the, again, this is just a, a guide to help you as you think through your program. And the STEM funding tool, this has been very popular. We just rolled it out during our professional development for leaders this summer. Um, the funding tool has all the federal funding sources listed here. And then if you have a particular need, let's say that um, you are needing to um, hire STEM personnel, maybe you want a STEM coordinator, um, these funding sources, that is an allowable expense. And so you just use this um, grid to help you. And then uh, you can go down and read more about the funding sources, um, each section individually, the purpose of the law, how the funding works, and then the federal funding source. Um, in researching STEM programs across the nation, um, I found very few states have a state level funding source. Most of these programs are um, being supported through ESSA funding. Um, of course, CTE would be through the Perkins funding and that Perkins funding can be spent down to fifth grade. Um, however, most of the, the schools uh, were using ESSA funding. So we thought that would be a helpful breakdown for you in looking at allowable expenses. Then looking finally at sustainability. For sustainability, when you're looking at this tool, it's simply uh, what do you need to consider in keeping your program uh, running? Again, this is a very simple tool to use. So you just look through the components and rank yourself. Um, and then down at the bottom, again, there will be a scorecard. Uh, they work just like the other scorecards. So you add up um, to figure out your rate. And then this will help you uh, for the next year in looking at your program planning guide um, and setting new goals for your campus, you can take your sustainability rating and embed that in. So you can see how all of these tools work together. They are intended to be used together to help you. Um, if there are pieces of this, of course, that you, you've got it covered, you already have STEM positions in place. Of course, you wouldn't need the, the leadership roles and responsibilities. So this is provided as um, a sequence. However, districts can use this a la carte as needed. In the next video, we are going to be going over implementation tools. Um, I'm going to switch back here to our uh, presentation and go to our last slide. Uh, which is uh, our survey. We really uh, would appreciate it if you complete this very short survey at the end here. If you've not ever used a QR code before, you just open the camera on your phone. It'll take a, a picture of that automatically. You'll click on the link and that'll take you directly to the survey. It's very short. It's designed to be a quick click, uh, but it will help us serve you better. Um, and if there are any planning tools that you really think uh, you need that we don't have here, there's a place for you to give us suggestions for further development. All right, I will hope to see you in the next instructional series video on implementation. Have a great day.